Louis Scott, it's a German again and today we take a look at the Ruger Precision Rifle. This one here I, like most of my guns, I customized a little bit. So I put on a Magpul uh, PIS stock, I changed out the bolt knob, I changed out the bolt shroud which is uh, made out of aluminum, uh, snipe custom arms, I make it. Um, I changed out the barrel. Um, it's also a precision match barrel, uh, started from a broad and blank. Um, also snipe custom arms makes it. And I put on a Seekins handguard um, and everything has been zero coded from Kodiak coatings in Austrian flat duck earth. Um, I topped it off with a uh, Vortex Gen 1 Razer HD uh, 5 to 20 and uh, I put the scope into a add mount. Um, very good mounts. Um, my second choice after spur I like to use add mounts. It's either spur or add mounts on all my guns. Um, I also put on a LaRue tactical grip, um, Atlas bipod and a Atlas uh, monopod or butt spike, whatever you want to call it. Um, and on the Magpul PRS stock I did change out uh, the butt plate so I can adjust the angle. This one here is made by uh, JP Enterprises. What I do like about this rifle the most is the fact that it takes three different magazines. So you can either use um, M1A magazines, you can use uh, AI Accuracy International magazines, um, lots of people make it now like we have Accurate Mag that makes a Accuracy International style. Um, Savage I think offers some. Um, now also you have the new Magpul Pmax in the AI uh, style. Um, it also works with AR-10 magazines, uh, DPMS, M110 style. So you have three different magazines that work with this gun. This gun ships with Magpul P-Max AR-10 style uh, on a something to, you know, think about it. If you use a AR-10 style magazine the bolt will not close um, if the magazine is empty so if you do want to single load at the range like I do most of the time um, you would need a M1A magazine or a accuracy international style pattern magazine uh, to the guns performance um, as you can see on the uh, a few minutes ago when you watched the video. Um, this particular one is chambered in a 6.5 Greedmore. Uh, like I said it's a custom barrel and it performs at a solid uh, sub quarter minute um, which is incredible for a rifle that will cost yeah I think you can find the Ruger RPR out of the box for about 900 to a thousand bucks. Uh, custom barrels uh, cost you about $600 so let's say you bought it for $900 plus $600 it's $1500 for a rifle that is capable of shooting a quarter minute um, a quarter minute is really small I mean it's a lot of full-blown custom rifles costing you know three thousand dollars and more have a hard time keeping uh, the accuracy at a quarter minute at a hundred yards um, this one here is no problem um, which makes it in my book the best precision bang for your buck um, if you want to get started into precision shooting or some long-range shooting and you do not want to, you know, spend the arm and the leg, I highly recommend get the Ruger Precision Rifle. 
um, it's second to none, even out of the box. This one here was chambered in a 243. It shot uh, sub three quarter MOA, um, between half and three quarter, which is really a decent, decent accuracy for a, a, a thousand dollar rifle. Um, optic wise, like I'm a firm believer that you never should skip on buying the best optic you can afford. The reason is that the scope is your, think about it, the scope is your only connection you have with the target. So you need the glass to be clear, you need your uh, click vintage and elevation adjustments to be true. Um, you don't want it, it inside here, it's called a erector system. You don't want it, you know, to be to get knocked loose just from transporting it or from shooting it, which will happen with cheaper scopes. So, um, my recommendation for cheap scopes always is, and it's always will be the SWFA Super Sniper uh, series of scopes. If you buy a nice 10 fixed power scope, you get it for about uh, $300. It's the best you could, you know, get for this amount of money. Um, also, the Gen 1 Razors from Vortex, um, they are very cheap right now. I think you can find them for 1500 bucks or less. Um, rule over thumb is that you always should spend at least three quarter of the price you spend on the gun, you should spend on the optic. Um, that's, so if you buy a rifle for seven uh, for a thousand bucks, the scope should cost you. You should spend seven fifty on the optic. Um, but it's only if you are not needed for deer hunting. Just if you're really serious about getting into long range shooting and precision shooting, that's what you will need or you will not be happy. Like I sold rifles to customers uh, north of $5,000 without optic and a week later they come back all proud and they put a $500 scope on it and I say, you just wasted your money on the rifle. It will never shoot to its capabilities with a $500 scope. Uh, there's a reason you get scopes from $200 to all the way up to $6,000. Um, it's not just because military might be using it, um, it's just a completely different animal. It's, you can't compare it, it's like an apple and an orange. So okay, enough about that, let's keep talking about the Ruger Precision Rifle. Um, the trigger that comes from the, um, from the factory um, has an, is adjustable. Um, it has a little, little bit of creep early on and not much at all, but it does break uh, consistently at the same at the same point. So after you get used to the trigger, you know exactly when the trigger will break. Um, I like the fact that it uses um, AR-15 AR-15 um, safety selectors. This one here and this in instance would be a, a badass um, selector. Um, the stock is foldable. You can fold the stock over and then you can move the sledge down and it will lock it in place. Um, very nice idea, I like it, especially if you want to transport it in a, in a uh, smaller rifle case. It also has a bolt um, release on the side, so the bolt comes out. Um, it's a two-piece bolt, so here's the bolt shroud, which is from the factory plastic. Um, I heard of stories where people, it, it came loose in the gun while firing and uh, broke off. I never had the uh, experience, but I did machine myself a uh, aluminum bolt shroud, so it will not happen. Uh, 
Um, handguard selection for the Ruger uh, precision rifle is quite difficult. Um, most, even so the claim said regular AR-15 handguards will fit, uh, which is partial true. Um, it does use a regular AR-15 barrel nut, not really to lock the barrel in. The barrel nut from the AR-15 is only used to hold the handguard on. But here's now the problem. Because it uses a different barrel nut, much like a Savage rifle, to hold the barrel on. Um, you have a big gap in between the Picatinny rail on the receiver and your Picatinny rail on top of your handguard. Um, it just doesn't go all the way flush back because you have the other barrel nut, the Ruger barrel nut in between. So even though they do fit and hold and mount just fine, you will have a gap in between which doesn't look good. It would have been the same with the Seekens handguard, um, but I just, you know, uh, machined the barrel differently or you could machine the uh, barrel nut that holds the handguard on um, to get rid of the scab. That's what I what I did here. Um, this rifle I fired now approximately three, four hundred rounds with it. Um, it's it's a blast to shoot. Um, I like how easy and fast and smooth the action cycles. Um, that's a big plus. Like I said, the trigger pull um, is good enough. I'm pretty sure soon we will have aftermarket triggers available. But here's the other thing that I try to tell people or newcomers all the time is let's for example take a Remington 700. Um, everybody wants to put in a lighter trigger pull. I need a lighter trigger pull. The problem is you will not learn anything if you put your 8 ounce or 1 pound trigger in your gun. Um, even if the trigger pull is 6 pounds, so let's call it 8 pounds, you still can shoot precise at a thousand yards if you have proper trigger control. So now if you're a newcomer and you switch to a 1 or 2 pound trigger, you will never learn the proper trigger control. It's It just ain't gonna happen. You what a lighter trigger will do for a newcomer to precision or long range shooting is it will mask your error in the trigger manipulation. Um, so I would highly recommend stay away from an aftermarket trigger till you uh, better or improved your shooting skills using a heavier trigger. Um, I think I will make some videos, um, step by step instructions for proper positioning, uh, the fundamentals of precision shooting, um, trigger control, breathing techniques. Um, so if people like it, just comment below and let me know and I will start on getting some videos out. Um, so like I said, if you want if you think about buying the Ruger RPR, do it. It is the best precision slash long range rifle, capable rifle out there for $1,000 out of the box. It's a fact. There's, I like Remingtons. I use most of my custom builds are built on a Remington action. But no Remington out of the box will perform like this one does. It, you gotta pay fifteen or eighteen hundred dollars for some souped up Remington out of the box, but for a thousand dollars nothing can can beat the Ruger precision rifle. Um, so that's the, the reason I have one. Um, I'm planning on shooting a few competitions with it. Uh, we will see um, how it holds up, you know, in a competition environment, something like, you know, a precision rifle series or um, I will go back uh, next year to Texas to shoot the Bushnell Brawl. I'm co highly considering <laughs> taking this rifle uh, just to see um, what I can do with it. The uh, scope base on top of the receiver has already 20 minutes of angle built in, 
so it basically makes your scope sit in an angle um, which will give you more elevation adjustment going out to greater range um, I like that it's a good idea to do that um, obviously the Picatinny rail on, on the handguard has zero MOA but I mean, you don't need it I'll say if you would you know got some money left and you buy your PVS-14 night vision device or something like that to shoot some coyotes at night or, or other things. Um, yeah, again, if you think about buying it, get it. You will not regret it. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked my video, like always, click the like button below. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button uh, up here. Um, yeah, so have a good day, enjoy, enjoy your freedoms with firearms, go shoot. Um, if you are not a member of the NIA, I would highly recommend you become a member of the NIA because I'm a firm believer uh, if you are not in the game, get out of the stadium. That's just how it is. You either join, you like firearms, you join the NIA or you don't join the NIA and just don't even own firearms. So, say protect your freedom. Okay, enough said. Enough reader said.